everybody. I want to share with you before I um, head to my group. And I really mean pray for me. I need God. I need prayer. So yesterday, I'm going to try to make this quick. Hey, cousin. And I'm going to try not to cry. That's why I put my glasses on. So yesterday, I was in my group with my girls. I normally have about 15 in high school and equal in middle school. I don't know how we got to this topic. But out of nowhere, one of my babies said, I don't know how we got here. And she said, I need a father. I need a daddy. I said, you need a father? You need a daddy? I mean, where does that come from? Who says that? Who says that? And um, she said it. And when I tell you that all of the other girls chimed in. Yesterday I had about eight. They had a project they had to do, so a number of them didn't come. And honestly, I don't think I could have taken all 15 with the same heart cry. But their cry was, I need a daddy. What do you need a daddy for? And I asked each of them, I need somebody to tell me, Jesus, help me, Lord. I need somebody to, to tell me I'm pretty. I need somebody to tell me it's going to be okay. I need somebody so I can feel safe. Jesus, help. There were eight girls that sat around that table. And not one of them had their father in their home. Not one. Not one. Not one. I would say maybe five of them knew who their father was. One of them had no idea who their father was. One of them, his father was in jail. But of those girls who knew who their fathers were and or had some level of relationship with them, They were like, they're not around. It's like, this is what one of them said. It's like, I, Jesus, help. It's like, I don't matter. That's what she said. It's like, I don't matter. One of them said, who does that? How do you bring a Jesus help us? How do you bring a child into the world and act like they don't matter? One of them said her father, her mother told her that he was a good dad until maybe you were about two years old. What? Yeah, because now you're walking around, you're getting in trouble, you're starting to talk, and he don't have patience for that. Yeah. All of them, except one, their mom was a teenage mom. One, her mother was as, as young as 13 when she had her. So you can imagine... The boyfriend was maybe somewhere between that age and maybe 17. One baby said, who said she didn't know who her father was, she said, I sometimes wonder if I was a one night stand. And therefore, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't be here. One said, My mother knew what kind of man he was, but she shouldn't have had me. She should have just aborted me like he told her to. Y'all, fathers, fathers, men, get to your children. I know the mommies may be crazy. I know some mothers may have stood in the way of you having a relationship. I know you feel like I got my Wednesdays and every other weekend and I'm paying child support, but get to your children. I'm not talking about the ones who are engaged. I ain't talking to you. I ain't talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to the ones who are trying to have a relationship and go get their kids. But even when you go get them, 
Talk to them. Spend time with them. Develop a relationship with them. So you become that safe place for them. I know you go get them on Wednesdays. I know you see them every other weekend. But time out for the relationship just being because I'm the father and you're the child. Or you're the I'm the mom and you're the child. No, you have to build relationship with your children. Do you know what their favorite color is? Do you know what their favorite video game is? Do you know their best friend's full name? Their real name? Help somebody. Help somebody. Our black community is failing because our men are not in place. Men get in place in your church, in your home, in your community. Several of them said their fathers have other children other than them. And according to them, their fathers take care of those kids. But why won't he take care of me? Why won't he? And I said, but you know what? He may be giving those other kids stuff, but that doesn't mean he has a re he has a relationship with them. He don't probably know their favorite color, or their favorite TV show. He probably don't know what's going on with them in school. And praise God if he does. But y'all, I'm crying out. I'm crying out for my babies who's that. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And some of them, my, my mom tells me, you know, I'm just like my father or, you. oh my God. And the stuff that mothers say to their kids. I know, I know the ones who listen to my videos, you probably not that mom who calls their kids out of their name and curse them. And, and because of you frustrated and working two and three jobs, trying to get them hundred dollar tennis shoes. trying to pay the bills, trying to keep the lights on. I understand y'all not the ones I'm talking to. I'm talking to them mothers who call their kids out of their names. Tell them they stupid. You ain't gonna never be none. You just like your daddy. Well, we all know you mad at they daddy because he raggedy. So what are you saying to them when you say that? Oh, our community got to get it together. We got to get it together. I have worked with young people for over 20 years. Going into 25 years, I have never, I have never had a child say to me, Miss Tate, I need a daddy. Now, let me say this. They didn't say I need my daddy. That's not what they said. They said, I need a daddy. And I even asked them, I said, are you saying you need your father? They was like, not necessarily. I said, well, sweetie, you can't have a daddy, a good daddy, unless your mama pick a good man that will marry her. I talked to him. I said, listen, I'm not dogging your mama. But she picked that man. She chose to lay down with that man and have a child, which was you. And praise God, she chose to have you. That means that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. But you cannot allow yourself to be beaten up at 13, 14, 15, 16, 12 because of the decision that your mother made and your father has made. You got to make a choice to be great. You got to make a choice to do this. You got to make a choice that the man you choose will be a responsible man, an accountable man. That he ain't already got one, two, three, four, five, sixteen kids all around the city, state, or country. Come on! We, you in this program, because you're going to make better decisions and better choices. Our kids need us. Our kids need us. I praise God for both parents being in the home. And I'm not saying, I'm not one of the people that say your kids shouldn't see you argue. Yeah, they do need to see you argue. They need to see you have disagreements. But it's how you disagree. They need to see you being able to have a disagreement and resolve it constructively. So they know what that looks like. Yes, they need to know how to do that. I bless God. I pray for marriages all the time. I counsel. I have the opportunity to coach and counsel many married couples. And I encourage marriage. But I'm going to say this. Don't get married just because you're pregnant. Don't get married just because you're pregnant. Get married because that person is the person you want to do life with for the rest of your life. That if they don't change, 
the person you're with right now, you're saying, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that the rest of my life. I could do that. And if not now, you wait a little bit. You test the seasons. But y'all, our kids need us. If it, the, what they said things like, ain't nobody for me. Don't nobody care about me. I ain't never had nobody support me. I said, well, what is Miss Tate here for? No, I can't fully fill your closet with clothes and buy you shoes and the latest earbuds and iPods. I can't do that for all of y'all. So therefore, since I can't do it for all of you, I can't do it for any of you. But I'm here every two days a week because God has put you on my heart and I love you with the love of the Lord and I know that you have a purpose and I know you have a plan. If you who are listening to this video, you have an opportunity to minister to somebody, to mentor somebody, I'm gonna encourage you to do that. Yeah, you go in, you do your thing, you say your speech at the school, in the assembly, and you go on. But find one, two, three young people that you can connect with that you can connect with and build a relationship with. I I bless God. I, I have Brittany and Erica and Chanel and I have so many young people I started with in the sixth grade and they're in their thirties now. And I thank God for that. But it didn't stop. And that's why God called me back to it. Y'all, my heart was broken. I cried with them. I prayed with them, yes, in a public school. We all took hands, we prayed. One baby said, Miss Tay, you know, help us Jesus help us Jesus she said this day thank you for praying but prayer don't work Jesus how you 15 and you think prayer don't work that was impossible she said prayer don't work Miss Tate prayer don't work I pray all the time and nothing changes nothing happens and one of the other girls chimed in and she said you gotta have faith and, and she said I do have faith and I said well baby let me ask you is there one time in your life that you should have got caught doing something. You should have maybe been arrested or your mama should have found out about something and she didn't. And she was like, yeah. And I said, well, that was God. That was God. Maybe you heard about a friend who got in an accident or something happened and you was like, man, I would have been with them or I used to be friends with them and they got caught up. I'm not friends with them anymore. I said, that was God. He's changing your situation. It just may not look like how you want it to look. Fathers, you got to step up. Men who are listening to this video, girl, sisters who have brothers and, and uncles and daddies who got other kids and your husband got brothers and y'all know he's not connected with his kids. Y'all need to say something in love we ain't here to judge or to beat you up, but bruh, you need to go connect with your kids. You need to call your son. You need to connect with your daughter. And I know the longer you stay away, you feel guilty. You feel ashamed. What do I say to him? Just call him. Find him on Facebook, Instagram. You don't want to deal with their mama? Inbox them. Text them. Tweet them. Something. Daddy was just thinking about you. I love you. I'm sorry I've been, been missing in action. I'm going to get it together. If all you do, because I know y'all ain't got a lot of words, brothers. So, But if all you do is text them a few times a week, daddy's just thinking about it. Even those of you who are engaged in your children's lives. They off in college or they're still here. You're in the home with them. You're not in the home with them. You see them. You spend time with them. Just text them once in a while. Dad's proud of you. Oh my God, do you know what that can do for them? Mamas, yeah, we, we can... We can encourage. But God created fathers to impart and to declare who their children were. Their identity comes from you. Their very existence comes from you. They need their fathers. So I encourage you. I encourage you. My God, I encourage you. Fathers, men, I love you with the love of the Lord. My God, I encourage you. Get connected, stay connected with your children. They need you. Thank God for fathers who have stepped in that we in this society call stepfathers. Ain't no biblical context for that. But we thank God for you. So, that love their mothers and their mother's children enough 
to say, I'll step in. And so we thank God for that. Thank you for hearing me. I needed to talk through this before I get to them here in the next few minutes. Hallelujah, Jesus. So pray for me. Pray for them. Um, in April, April 7th, I will be doing um, my Father Forum Conference. Many of you know I do something called the Father Lost Forum where I bring men together to talk about their father issues in a separate se setting. I bring women together to do the same. And uh, April 7th of this year, God has um, instructed me to go forth and do a men's conference. I know I'm a woman doing a men's conference, but it'll be all men. I'll be there to open it and close it and maybe somewhere in the middle intro in introduce some things, but it'll be men. And I'm, I'm blessed to have Dr. Uh, Bishop, Dr. Pastor Marvin Sapp will be the keynote speaker for that day. You will have breakouts, you will have workshops that are just for men. And it's called the Father Forum Conference. From loss to gain. And so equipping men to be all that God has created them to be as fathers, as husbands, as men, empowering you. Uh, so um, I bless God. It'll be at uh, Westside Missionary Baptist Church here in Indianapolis where Pastor Michael Bryant is the pastor. So, But it's a T-Tape ministry uh, conference event and uh, I thank God. I, God. God gave me peace. I said, Lord have mercy. But if T.D. Jakes can do a women's conference, glory to God, and it, it touches hundreds and thousands of lives, um, this is the start of what I believe God has called me to do for me. And so come from all over the country. Come from all over Central, uh, Mid-America, Indiana, of course, Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, and join us April 7th here in Indianapolis. Mark your calendars. More details will be coming out here in the next uh, few months. My prayer is honestly that the conference is free for men. That is my prayer. So I'm looking for sponsors. Um, and at the most, it'll be a little bit of, of nothing, amen, to just cover the cost of, of bringing our speaker in and our location and things. So I love you. Thank you for hearing me. Continue to pray. Pray for our men. Pray for our community. I believe that if when we get our men in a place of healing and wholeness, our homes will be healthier, our marriages, our family, our children, our churches, we can be what what God has called for us to be. And so um, we call in all men on April the 7th. And and, and even the, the slight trepidation I had about doing a men's conference, it was solidified when those babies cried out yesterday that they need a daddy. They need a daddy. Not necessarily they daddy, but they need a daddy. I did end up saying to them, Sometimes God allowing your father to be MIA for a season or a lifetime is probably, it could sometimes be what's best for you. What we deem as God's rejection can sometimes be his protection. So I bless God and I love the Lord. And I'm here, so thank you for taking this ride with me. Um, and so we'll be writing letters to their fathers today to those who know where their fathers are, who have a relationship with their father. We're going to write letters to their fathers. Um, and it is my prayer that they will send them off. They will send those letters off. They will get them to their father. Their mothers will get them to their father. I did have one baby who said, my mom's not gonna want me to do that. And I said, well, give me your number. She was like, no. I said, well, ask her if I can call her. And I'll, I'll explain to her what I'm doing and prayerfully she will allow you to do this. So, amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you so much. God bless you all. You have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Be safe in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless.